Hello everyone, welcome to Leia's channel. Uh, this is not Leia, it's Martin. Uh, today I take over because Leia had a, such a hard week that I thought uh, let's give her some days off uh, so that um, she can recover from being social the whole time. And uh, I'll take you around to see the property, but I just want to show you some trees. And uh, these are trees that we found on the land um, when we came here uh, and uh, that I tried to learn about uh, in the past year. And um, these are the top 10. Let's go. Uh, this is our fig tree. It's uh, the only one that we found on the land when we came here. Uh, it was completely covered in brambles. We did a first attempt at pruning it uh, last year. Um, but we will probably do it again uh, at the end of this year because in the meantime I've, uh, I've learned that uh, the fig tree uh, likes to be cut uh, for it to, to bush out really well and uh, uh, yeah, regain his former glory. We did it very carefully, we took out only the dead bits because we didn't know if we would kill the tree and it was in such a sorry state that uh, I didn't want to take a risk and, and kill it. Um, uh, this is the the Pingo de Mel uh, variety. Uh, it means that uh, or that means drop of honey, and uh, it gives you an indication of how sweet it tastes when uh, you eat the fruit. Uh, there are some fruit on there. Um, they will remain a little bit greenish uh, even if they ripen up. And uh, we ha have received another um, uh, variety from our, the former owners. Uh, it's the Preto, uh, the black variety, and it's over there, and it's uh, this tall now, uh, but it's really growing. Hi, Hank. Uh, and uh, we're really happy that we have a fig tree, and uh, we'll um, uh, propagate it more uh, over the land so that we have more fig trees. Welcome to our quince tree. It's uh, called marmelo in Portuguese and it's used for making marmalade. It's actually where the word marmalade comes from in English. And uh, it's in the same family as apples and pears. Uh, and it is its own separate genus though. Uh, according to some Bible scholars, it's also the fruit which got uh, Adam and Eve uh, kicked out of, the, out of paradise. Um, uh, but I don't know about uh, biblical scholars. Um, but uh, it's a fact. Yeah, the, the fruit is quite hard. Um, it uh, ripens in autumn, uh, but only if you are in a really hot climate and apparently we are not uh, in a hot enough climate for it to uh, ripen uh, to, uh, to become soft at the end. Uh, so you actually have to boil it uh, or uh, do some extra ripening after you harvest it. Apparently it's very healthy and uh, uh, we haven't had a chance ourselves to harvest it, but hopefully next, uh, this, at the end of this year, we will uh, give it a shot and uh, tell you and show you maybe even how it ends up being. Um, that's the queen or marmelo. Welcome to the pine tree. Uh, this is the maritime pine. Uh, it's been suggested by a lot of botanists that st this tree is introduced here in Portugal. Uh, but uh, Isabel Figueroa uh, did some research, or a lot of research, she uh, visited uh, 50 archaeological sites and um, did research on the charcoal found there, and she found that it goes back to the Bronze Age at least, uh, that this tree has been here in Portugal, at least in this area, and then uh, spread out over the rest of it, and uh, that makes it a native tree in my book. It doesn't mean that this tree hasn't been planted in these monoculture uh, type forests. Um, it's, uh, it has many uses. Um, it, nowadays it's, been, it's used just like the eucalyptus tree in um, uh, the pulp uh, or for pulp in the paper industry. Uh, but it's also used in construction and uh, the resin is used for things like uh, toothpaste. Uh, of all things. Historically, um, it has been used for the planking in ships uh, during the colonial and discovery era. So it, it has, a, has a bit of a history. We want to use it for firewood mainly. So we'll cut them down slowly because they are growing in the midst of our olive, uh, olives as well. And uh, um, yeah, there are places where we want them and, and places where we don't want them. Um, it, it's perfectly fine to use pine uh, for uh, burning, 
Um, I heard a lot of stories in the comments that we shouldn't use pine for uh, for fire um, because uh, apparently it, it uh, would uh, start chimney fires and stuff like that. But uh, I, I looked into it and uh, it, it, it seems to be a myth. Um, uh, what the problem is with pine wood if you don't burn it properly like uh, at a low temperature. Um, it will create a lot of creosote, and, uh, uh, but that is with any type of wood. If you don't burn, burn it properly, it will create a creosote and the creosote will uh, clog up your chimney. Uh, but if you uh, maintain a proper temperature in your uh, with your fires and you clean it, uh, your chimney once in a while, then uh, there's no increased risk uh, in burning pine wood uh, over other types of wood. Um, that's it about the maritime pine. Uh, uh, the Great Willow. Um, this is the tree that gave us uh, water in the sense that it pointed towards the place that would have water um, because uh, those trees love to grow in water or near water and um, uh, this was uh, one of the few that I could see from the beginning. Um, in the meantime we found a couple of others uh, that are also in like trenches or where water gathers and uh, uh, there's still some water that you can see that uh, is near the willow tree and um, uh, we would like to use this willow we don't want to cut it but we uh, will coppice it and use the, the, the poles for construction of baskets or of fencing or other type of stuff um, and uh, this is a very well-known practice in the Netherlands, but it's, it's, I don't know if it's a practice here, but I will introduce it otherwise. And uh, it's a great way to use a willow because it grows fast. This is a hawthorn. Yes, it's a tree, so it belongs to in this list. It has one stem coming from the, uh, from the ground, so it's a tree. And uh, we have bushes as well, but this is a tree. And uh, it's a very important tree to us uh, because it's uh, not only use it, we use it for a predator deterrent in our chicken run. Um, uh, uh, birds of prey don't like to come near those uh, thorns and uh, foxes uh, don't like them either. And the chickens can jump into it when the fox is around, uh, if it comes around because we have Louis. And uh, birds of prey never even see them. Um, and uh, we also have a couple in the garden. It's a great way to bring in pollinators like bees. And when the haas are ripening in the, in the summer, uh, it, it, it distracts the birds because they really love those haas, but they uh, will stay away from our crops and have something to feed on uh, while they're here. And it's a safer environment. They don't have to be on the ground and stuff. So that's why we keep them around. And uh, another, a use that we have for them is to use them as fencing. Um, it's a, a very common hedge uh, a tree and or shrub and uh, we want to use it as well uh, because it really thrives here so uh, if you know what thrives here then you use those things for hedging. It's uh, You lay the hedge down and then it grows again so it it's a life hedge and all the thorns will keep the animals in and people out or other animals out. That's the humble common hawthorn. So let's talk about the eucalyptus tree. Uh, the eucalyptus tree here uh, behind me is one of the few that we have on our land. Um, uh, but in, in the whole of Portugal it covers about a quarter of the whole uh, of all forests. Uh, there are big uh, eucalyptus plantations. The tree has been in introduced here in the 18th century. Uh, it's actually a pretty sad history of why this uh, is now one of the most dominant uh, tree species here in uh, uh, Portugal. Uh, but it's a long history, so uh, I won't go into it in detail here. You can find a link in the description if you want to know more about it. Suffice it to say, we want to get rid of it on our land. Um, uh, we will do it in time. We will use the, the, the different uh, stems for construction and uh, other type of things. Um, uh, you can even burn it as firewood because it's great for it. Um, overall, the tree is used in uh, the pulp industry or paper industry for pulp and uh, the eucalyptus scented products are also made of it uh, you can uh, take it from the bark and the leaves I think um, 
uh, but I don't really like the smell of it, so uh, uh, it's not for me. But uh, anyone, well, taste is uh, an inarguable thing. I would la rather replace them with some native species or uh, less invasive species, let's call it like that. This is the Medrano. Um, it's also called the strawberry tree. It's a very important tree on our land. It's native to the Mediterranean region and it has a very, it's very drought resistant so it stops desertification and it has a deep root system which means that it also uh, um, stops erosion uh, from happening. Uh, they are, they are usually shrubs but they can grow to uh, trees. This one is a tree because it has one stem. Um, and uh, we uh, want to uh, plant more of them on our land uh, if, uh, as a replacement for all the pine trees which don't have a deep root system so they don't stop erosion from happening. And uh, uh, it's also used for the strawberries that you have under the Medronios. Uh, is used to make an alcoholic beverage called Medronio in Portugal. Um, uh, it's uh, a very good kicker, uh, so uh, uh, maybe if we have enough of them we can also start making some alcohol from it, which is nice. The cork oak, uh, one of the most important trees on our land and uh, also the, one of the most native trees in Portugal. Uh, the fossil rem remnants go back to the tertiary period and um, it, uh, it is of major ecological and economic importance in Portugal. Um, the uh, cork tree is part of the Montado system, which is a type of silvicultural uh, management. Um, and uh, it means that you have these big cork oaks in the pasture and uh, you let the grazers uh, um, find shade underneath the tree but also eat the acorns and therefore the tree trees will also be protected because they function have a, an, uh, a function in in the landscape um, and uh, you can even see it now if you uh, uh, drive towards Castelo Branco, they are even planting new cork oaks on pastures where uh, uh, big uh, cows are still grazing. Um, on this land we will also keep them of course because they are protected um, and uh, we will uh, integrate them into our forest here and um, make sure that, that uh, there will be more cork oaks, but also holm oaks, and uh, they will remain here. And maybe we'll put pigs in this forest in the future. Who knows? Um, more, uh, more on the cork oak. This cork oak has been peeled a couple of years ago by someone who shouldn't have been here, but it can be peeled every nine years. So in a couple of years, like four or five, this one is due again and uh, we can make some money out of it. Uh, from the third peel onwards, they can be used for the cork stoppers. And uh, before that, uh, you can use the cork for flooring and for insulation, um, which is also a nice product. And uh, there are, uh, well, many other products that you can make from a cork, but these are the most important ones, I think. The holm oak. Um, another oak on our land. It's also native to the Mediterranean region. These are two examples of our, on our land, but we have many more. And uh, they uh, are uh, uh, acorn producers for us. Uh, we will try and make uh, flour out of it. And um, because these acorns are especially low in tannins, uh, so uh, it's easy to soak those out and uh, make flour out of it and uh, it's much more preferable than growing acres of grain. Um, furthermore, they can be integrated into the uh, silvocultural uh, pasture uh, because they drop so many acorns and uh, they also have uh, big canopies, especially if they grow older. And uh, therefore also uh, grazers can hide underneath uh, during the hottest part of the day and uh, feed on the acorns, of course. We're at the olive tree. Uh, that's the tree we've all been waiting for. It's the backbone of our homestead operation here. Um, we have two main varieties, uh, the Galega and the Cordoville. 
uh, the Galega is the one, it's green and uh, it's a table olive and uh, um, uh, it's, it's, it's highly valued here, it's, it's pretty common in Portugal. Uh, and um, uh, the former owner really loves it because he uh, kept pointing us out where the Galegas were. And we even have some trees that are, have uh, a branch of the Galega uh, grafted on it. Uh, the other type is uh, the Cordoville. The Cordoville is the or it's, uh, original variety here in uh, uh, Castelo Branco region, that's the region where we're in. It's used mainly uh, for pressing uh, olive oil from it and it's priced because uh, it, uh, it's high rate of oleic acid and um, that makes it very tasty, a little bit, uh, um, yeah, runny, uh, I mean it's uh, thinner uh, because of the, uh, of the acid. Uh, we haven't had a chance to, to harvest it yet, uh, we will ha have a harvest this year which is a surprise to us because we have been pruning most of the the, the olive trees and uh, we thought they would need a year or two to recover from that but we will have a harvest and uh, that will provide us with enough oil and uh, uh, cook with enough olives to eat. Uh, that will only increase over the years the, the, uh, the harvests and if it does then we can start making products from them like soap or uh, sell the oil outright and um, uh, that, that, that will be part of our income uh, here on the homestead. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these, uh, this top 10. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more of Leas because this is not going to be a regular thing. And um, I hope to see you guys on Sunday. Bye. <laughs>